Four out of the last five World Cups have been won by the home side. It's in India. Look at the talent they have on display. They are the favourites, aren't they? They're the clear favourites or not for you? They are the favourites. I wouldn't put them to be the clear favourites just because of the amount of quality sides there are out there. If you look at their squad, I mean, they've got two of the greatest white ball batters there have ever been in the game in Rohit Sharma with three double hundreds in this format and Virat Kohli, a great player in any situation, but a greatest player in a run chase you would want. You've got possibly one of the future greats in Shubman Gill. He's a real talent. Jasprit Bumrah coming back for them is an outstanding bonus because he bowls in all phases of the game. So I think that batting line-up and the bowlers there are, you know, that is right up there with one of the best squads in the tournament. What they probably lack is if you look at their batters, their batters don't bowl and their bowlers don't bat. So it's a different makeup to their side to maybe an England with all the all-rounders or an Australia with all the all-rounders. And the other thing they will have to overcome is the pressure. Now, you would argue an Indian cricketer is under pressure all the time, but where they have fallen short maybe since 2011 in ICC events is that when they get to a knockout stage, we were there in Adelaide in the World T20, they sort of plodded along to a below par score against England. England knocked them off, none down. Uh, in the New Zealand semi-final in 2019 on a pitch that was uh, doing a little bit, they plodded along. You know, They've got to go above par. They've got to play a bit fearless cricket when you get to a knockout stage. I think they'll get to a knockout stage when they get to a semi-final and the pressure's on. That's when they still need to play fearless cricket. But the one thing that, that just to add to Nasser's point about how strong they are, that, that even adds more to it, is, the, is the, the fitness levels of Hardik Pandya, his ability to be able to bowl. He's bowled a little bit in the Asia Cup so far, but he's bowled really, really well. And there are very few sides throughout the tournament that would be genuine contenders that have somebody that bats in the top six that has an ability to bowl. So it's the old Ben Stokes role that we had for years with England. Australia have the likes of Stoinis and, and, and Cameron Green, but that role genuinely balances a side and over the course of the World Cup we're going to see various different pitches. The majority of contending teams have spinners that bat really well so that, that base is covered but having Hardik Pandya fit and able to bowl five, six overs of quality bowling really does for, in my eyes make them probably favourites. You see more Indian cricket than we do because of your IPL commitments. What do you see with India's squad and where they're set? I agree with Nasser, which doesn't happen often, but <laughs> fearless cricket is their issue. Fearless cricket's their issue. They don't play fearless cricket enough. They play stats-driven cricket and they're too worried about their stats too often. And to me, that is the one area that I'm concerned about with their batting side of things. If they go out there, they've got all the talent and some of the best players, if not the best players in the world. But it is about playing that fearless cricket at the right time of the tournament. And I, I think that is what's really let them down in the last few World Cups. They don't go out there and take risks because they are so worried about what might be said or what might be printed or what might, someone else might say about them or their place in the team. So that's the one area I'm concerned with. I agree with Morgs on the, on the Hardik Pandya thing. If he's fit and raring to go, then they have the likes of Akshar and Jadeja. They're very, very good. they got all the parts. Can they put it together and can they play that style of cricket that lets them win a World Cup? How do you block noise out then as a side? Yeah, I think it's a big role that leaders play. So the likes of Raul Dravid, their head coach, um, Rohit Sharma, plays a, a huge part in that as well. And remember, India toured here last summer and his first initial press conference was, no, no, we want to play fearless cricket. We do it in bilateral series all the time. They fell short at the T20 World Cup, which was his first test with a new coach in place as to how that they were going to react. And they didn't get it right in Adelaide. But home conditions give you a certain level of comfort, a certain level of habit that you've already grooved over the years that is an advantage that other teams don't have. So it will be a lot easier blocking out the noise in India, might sound silly, in <laughs> India, because they've done it before, but it, the, the direction in doing that will come from the captain and coach. What about Pakistan then? They've not had the Asia Cup that they necessarily wanted. They've got some injury concerns to some of their senior bowlers, their potent bowlers. They haven't named their World Cup squad, so we're going to show you what they've done for the Asia Cup. Where are they at? Well, it depends how those three seamers are. I mean, Shaheen Shafridi is fit at the moment, but Harris Ralph in the last previous Asia Cup game got injured. Nazim Shah, they say, may not be ready for the first game of the World Cup. That is a seriously potent 
bowling attack in those three seamers in particular. You know, bowlers, as Owen Morgan has found out, as various captains, if you don't take wickets, the run rate's just going to go away from you. It's going to go through the roof. So wicket takers in there, they've always had. They've got the number one ranked batter in Barbarazan. We know what he can do. Um, Fakhar Zaman has been a bit out of nick recently, but he's top draw at the top of the order. Then Mohamed Rizwan with Barber is that sort of regulation run getter that goes through the whole innings and gets a lot of runs. One thing they've lacked, which is unusual for Pakistan, is their spinners are a little bit out, out of form. Shadab Khan hasn't been that good recently. So in a, in a World Cup in India, you want that you know, threat from your spin. But one thing with Pakistan, is they are a big, big, little bit like New Zealand, they are a big ICC event tournament side. They can be awful and then suddenly they can go on a roll. They, they are that sort of nation, they're that sort of cricketing side because that's how their cricketers are. They are mercurial. One day they'll be very low, next day they'll be outstanding. Their first game, I think, is Netherlands, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a, you know, you don't tra take the Netherlands lightly. You know, Pakistan of old, that was a classic game they would lose. So in this World Cup with Afghanistan and Netherlands, there are no easy games. Make sure you're switched on right from the first game. Are they dynamic enough with the bats? We always look at the Pakistan batting lineup and you look at what they did the other evening in terms of the toss against India. We always look at Barber and Rizwan. Have they got enough oomph for this World Cup? I, I certainly think they have enough oomph. It's, it's whether we see it in big moments throughout the tournament. And, and, and again, that comes from outside noise. You know, there's, there's no surprise that in, in a big game that one side or the other in the biggest game in cricket has retreated a little bit. And that'll be a learning curve for them. And it, it certainly should be used in that vein. So close to a World Cup, that should be almost a point where it's like, right, we're not doing that again. We're not going back to the, the way that we played in Sri Lanka. It's a case of moving things forward. My biggest concern for Pakistan, that's already alluded to, is the, the fitness of their seamers. I think Shadab does a, a good enough job with, the, with his wrist spin. In ICC trophies, he always comes out of it as a, as a batter who bowls. The fitness levels of Fahim Ashraf, you know, all-rounding ability to contribute at 7-8 is important as well because it's not always your top order who score the runs. It's the guys that balance the side that make that team feel comfortable enough to play the method that they want to play and maybe take on a bit of risk as well. What about your old foe, the Australians? They're under the cosh in Centurion. You can see that game against South Africa now on Sky Sports Mix. They're chasing a few, but overall, where are they now at? Uh, All-rounders, they've got a, a hat full of them. And when you look at guys who can bat in your top six or seven and bowl or give you options, they've got them in Cameron Green in Travis Head if they have to, in Maxwell, in Stoinis in particular. There's four guys who could all bat in the top six or seven and offer you some overs. So they've got a, a lot of bases covered. What do they do with that batting order? That's the issue around, you know, whether Cameron Green plays or Steve Smith plays would be one of the issues for them. Carry the keeper, more than useful. And then you look at that bowling attack, it can do a great job in Indian conditions. Reverse swing will come into play perhaps at times, so Stark does that brilliantly well. I think uh, Josh Hazelwood is one of the, the sort of up-and-comers in the last two or three years in white ball cricket. So they've got bases covered. It's a very good side. It's a strong side. It's full of all-rounders who can bat in the top six or seven. I think that helps you win World Cups. One name I'm going to pick out, Mitch Marsh. Well, he's making good decisions today, win the toss and, and bowl, conceding <laughs> 416, I'll tell you what. Him with the that, bat, though, in that T20 uh, series was box office. It is, absolutely. I mean, he's, he's, he's almost gone to a new level. We watched him in the Ashes this year. The 100 that he got at Headingley was absolutely breathtaking when conditions were completely going against him. And against a runner play, he goes out and, and plays in innings like that. And, contributions in the T20 World Cup that they won in the UAE batting at three those shots that he plays through mid-wicket are remarkable and they're off proper bowlers world-class bowlers so it's good to see him get some captaincy experience in this series while Pat Cummins is resting but also it seems to have come an age come come to an age really as a batter Nobody questions whether he can bowl now or not. He is a genuine batter who will bat in their top five. I think they're a well-rounded side. That their, their biggest question will be what their best 11 is going to be. So what that batting order will be. Because they, I've no doubt that all of them can bang out runs. Um, and the bowling, I agree with what Dooley mentioned with earlier about their bowling will, 
it'll adapt to conditions really well with the experience of Cummins, Hazelwood, Stark, various other bowlers. But um, it's what, what their best 11 is. I couldn't tell you what it is at the minute. You're going to have a couple of dirhams on South Africa. You were sort of tipping yeah. them a while ago. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we all do these shows for the ICC, for, for uh, all the coverage around the world, and everybody picks India and England. I pick South Africa to win it because I don't want to be the same as everybody else. I just You're look. certainly not that, Simon. <laughs> I just look at it. And what I see from South Africa is power and guys who have played in India a lot more in the last year and a half, two years. When you think about their IPL candidates, whether it be Markram, Miller, Ngidi, Rabada, Nokia from a bowling point of view, Quinton de Kock, Hendricks, Janssen, Klaassen, they've all played a lot of cricket in India in the last couple of years. I think this is their time. I think this is their time, this is their year. The experience they've got, I've picked Quinton de Kock as a leading run scorer, Shamsi as a leading wicket taker, and South Africa to win it. I've gone the trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> They've got an excellent record in world events, so you're on to a winner, I think, with this one. He, he would have got good odds. That's the only. <laughs> yeah, he would have got good odds. <laughs>